Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome in. We're going to sing a little bit more, so you guys don't mind standing and keeping it going with us. shadow oh God you're near am I breaking oh God you're near you're near oh God you never leave my side searching oh God you're near in my wandering oh God you're near when I feel alone oh God you're near am 
Will stand firm through all my life. Yes. Oh God, you never leave my side. Your We thank you so much. You're a God that's so consistent. God, I thank you that we get to marvel at your unfailing love and how despite our shortcomings and despite how, how far we fall and how far we step away from you um, in our own will that you chase after us and that you continually seek us. That that's, that that's not a make or break thing to you, God, that that you love us without regard for anything that we are, without regard for uh, anything we fail at, without regard for how twisted and awful we are as human beings, you still, you still chase after us. God, we thank you that you've never wronged us and that your love for us is undying. to sing thy grace streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious sonnet song by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it. Now 
out of God's unchanging love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to Wandering from the fold of God, He to rescue me from danger, interposed His precious blood. To grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace now, like a shackle, bind my wandering heart to me. Go to wander, Lord, I feel. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Here's the mount I'm fixed upon it. Mount of God's unchanging love. Thank you, guys. If you guys just came in, welcome. We're so glad to have all of you. We're going to kick it off with a quick greeting time. So if you guys wouldn't mind standing, saying hi to somebody around you, be friendly. I know it's hard early in the morning, but you can do it.
financial peace. We all want it. For a while, I didn't have it. 20 years ago, I hit rock bottom. I lost just about everything. I turned to God for help, and I learned how to handle money His way. As you can imagine, it worked. That's why I started Financial Peace University, because God's ways work. Whether you're in over your head or you're doing okay right now, if you bring home $10,000 or $10 million, if you're 21 or 61, we all need a plan. Millions of people have been through Financial Peace University. They have success stories of their own. They've learned how to get rid of debt, prepare for generations to come, and give like crazy. Your success story, your financial peace is up to you. Now is your time. It's time to take control of your money. It's time to get ready for what God has for you. It's time for financial peace. Financial Peace University is something our church is doing this fall. Um, it's a really exciting thing. Me and my wife did it this last last fall. Um, and it's really a great opportunity. I, I really want to stress again what he just said in the video of uh, it's really for everyone. It's, it's, it's not just, hey, if you're in a financial wreck, you go here to get out of it, which it does help with that. Or if you're like, hey, if you're in a great spot, it only helps you. It really does help everyone, uh, whether you're in any spot of life. Like for, for me and my wife, we weren't in a ton of debt, but it did help us and kind of save towards getting towards the house kind of thing. Like it is really for everyone in every stage of life. So I really encourage you guys, go check it out. Talk to Doug right there, blue shirt in the back. Uh, he would love to talk to you about it, give you a little more information. Uh, it really is just, just a great resource. And uh, one of my favorite things Doug, uh, Dave Ramsey says in the series is just like, hey, broke people can't feed people, which is really true. So <laughs> that's like one of the ways that, you know, God just encourages us to manage money well so that we can be a part of what God is doing in the world. So uh, check that out. If you're not sure about it, talk to Doug, um, and he'd be happy to kind of give you some uh, answers to the questions um, that you might have. So uh, good morning, by the way. My name is Logan. I'm the youth pastor here at Cornerstone. A very special welcome to you if you are here for the first time today. We are glad you joined us for worship. Um, there's a couple ways we'd love to connect with you, especially if it's your first time. Uh, if you could, in the seat back in front of you, there's a little card called a connect card there, the blue box. Um, if you could fill it out and drop that in the offering basket later in service, that'd be great. We'd love to give you a call and shoot your email to just answer any questions you may have. Also, we have an app. You can download it at the App Store, the Google Play Store, uh, and you guys can follow any information you have. You can fill out a greeting card, but you can also just get anything you hear here at church or anything in the bulletin. It's all in the app, so make sure you have the app. It's a good resource to have if you are involved here at Cornerstone because it gives you more information about what's happening. So we have a bunch of announcements, and it's super exciting, and there's so much stuff going on. Real quick, kind of important, but probably most of you guys won't run up, remember it after service, is we have like the lost and found is like overflowing with a bunch of jackets nobody wants. Uh, so outside in the greeting table on the way out, uh, that if you want to check out, maybe you need to do some summer shopping uh, or whatever, there's a bunch of jackets, water bottle, whatever, just check it out because we're going give it, to give it away this week. So uh, if you forgot that you missed something, you will find it there probably. Uh, also, by the way, if you are a new person here today, we would love to say hello to you right next to that Lost and Found box in the, uh, the Welcome Center outside. Okay, women's ministry. Women's ministry. Where are we at, women's ministry? Woo -woo! Okay, there we go, women's ministry. Uh, we got two things coming up for you. Uh, the first thing, or actually, like, but yeah, two things. The first thing is women's Bible study is starting back up this Wednesday. What? Uh, it's a potluck, 630. Uh, it's a potluck. It's great. The food's great. It's fantastic, I think. Um, it's an awesome opportunity to just kind of launch into women's ministry of the Bible study that starts, you know, Wednesday mornings and Wednesday nights. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for you to meet new ladies if you uh, don't know the ladies here at the church and make some new friendships and also just to continue to build on those uh, relationships. So that's coming this Wednesday at uh, 6.30 p.m. Uh, also, women's retreat is two weeks away. That's crazy. That's super soon. September 14th through 16. It's an awesome opportunity, again, to just grow in your faith, but also just grow in your friendships, too, here at the church, and really get to know people uh, beyond just the surface level of, hey, well, I talked to them for 30 seconds at church one time. You know, it's a great opportunity for you to really get to develop friendships. I really encourage you. Sign-ups are going to be in the, the table in the back after service. Um, be there or be square is really the problem. 
Uh, second thing, men's ministry. Where are the men at? Where are the men at? Yeah, there we go. So the first thing, men's Bible study is back this Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Be right here at the church downstairs, 7 a.m. There's coffee and there's bagels. It's fantastic. Uh, but really come. It's an awesome opportunity, again, to just develop friendships with guys here at the church and continue to encourage one another um, in our faith. Also, the men's retreat is coming up, which is way better than the girls' retreat. Just saying. Uh, this one, th this year, is going to be October 12th through the 14th. It's at the same place as last year, which is Mount Crags uh, Wilderness Camp in Malibu, which is pretty cool. Uh, the cost is only $85, which is cheaper than the women's retreat. So, you know, another reason, another another point for the guys. Uh, we're playing. Uh, we're going to play games. It's fun. They have a, a wiffle ball stadium. They have uh, they have frisbee golf. I mean, it's just a great time. We have amazing food. It's just awesome. So, men, if you are a guy, make sure to sign up for the men's retreat. It'll be really cool. Also, volunteer appreciation dinner, that's coming up real soon as well. September 7th, that's this Friday, uh, from 6 o'clock to 8. Uh, if you volunteer in any capacity here at Cornerstone, uh, we really want to just bless you and, and just thank you for what you do. We really couldn't make church run uh, on a regular Sunday or any of our events without uh, volunteers helping us out. So we really appreciate what you do, and we want to have a time together as volunteers to really just thank you. And Sam's going to talk a little bit just about the vision of the church and, and why we're volunteering and kind of what the whole point is with that. And uh, it's great. We're going to have dinner together as well. It's just going to be fun. We'll have some cool games uh, and a gift for you, which is a surprise. Um, but also child care is available. So if you're like, hey, I volunteer and I just want to ha have my kids wash for a couple hours, boom, great opportunity. Uh, one second, Rob. Um, finally, uh, we're starting a new thing here at Cornerstone uh, called Cornerstone Friday Nights. Uh, this is something that's going to be a music night out on the patio. If you guys don't know and haven't realized, we're kind of renovating stuff around the church. And we're going to be putting some shades out in the patio, and uh, it's going to be a, just a cool place to be. So we're going to have like a music night, uh, live music, and uh, it's going to be a fun time to hang out. We're going to be having tacos and also coffee, which is a great combination. Uh, you can have them at the same time, taco, coffee, taco, coffee. Um, but it's like a dollar tacos, which are great, and then maybe have a coffee like after tacos, uh, which the coffee is free, tacos cost a dollar. But it's a great deal no matter what. Uh, there's going to be more information on the website, the bulletin, the app. Uh, just keep tuned for that. that that's uh, coming up on September 28th, marking your calendar. It'll just be a cool time to hang out and enjoy live music. Like, who doesn't like live music, right? I mean, everyone likes live music. Um, so... I encourage you guys to mark those on your calendar. I'm actually going to invite Mr. Sam Boone up, and he's going to share with us a message today. Thank you, Logan. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, students, if you are uh, middle school or high school, we are invite you to go downstairs with Logan, and um, you can enjoy some conversation with him. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Sam. It's, I'm glad to have you guys here. Um, it is great to see Blake Matthew back up here playing guitar. Yeah. Blake has uh, been a part of our church for a long time. In the last uh, maybe year, he's been over in New Mexico doing some work, and uh, great to have him back, and so that's wonderful, and great to have him playing up here. He's uh, just a great guy, so... Um, also, a couple things that I just wanted to share that we can be praying for. Um, number one, uh, Jay, oh, Jay and Sonny Chun are here. And uh, Jay and Sonny, they just had a little baby, Joshua. Um, he, so um, he, was, he, was born, he was born premature, and so he's still, um, he's still in the NICU. And so uh, if you can be praying for um, Jay and Sonny, be praying for little Joshua, he's He's doing better, and he's, he's getting stronger, but uh, continue to pray for them and, and uh, lift them up in your prayers. That'd be great. Um, and it's good to see you guys. I didn't expect to see you, so excellent, wonderful. Um, and second, you can be praying, would you be praying for uh, Kevin Cook? Kevin, uh, we just, I just did a service yesterday for Kevin's father. His uh, dad, Skip, passed away um, just recently, and so if you can be praying for Kevin and his family, um, that'd, be, that'd be wonderful. In fact, I'd love to take a moment and just um, I know there's a lot of needs, and I know Sunday morning we come, and I don't know all the needs of everyone in the church, but the Lord does. And I'd love to take a moment, if we can pray. Um, I know oftentimes we come, and there's sometimes heavy burdens in our hearts, and sometimes um, we're just elated and excited. But if we can take a moment and pray together, I'd, I'd love to do that. Father, I thank you. I thank you for church, uh, that we can gather together, and that you 
uh, that, that there is support, there is love, there is community here. Uh, God, I thank you for um, things like Blake being back home and uh, just a blessing uh, to see him here and using his gifts, Lord. I, um, I also know that there's, there's hurts and there's pains and there's challenges. And, and so, God, I, I pray for Kevin um, and I pray for his family, Lord, as they are grieving the loss of, of, a, of his father, just a great man. Uh, would you be with them? Would you encourage them? Would you strengthen them? Uh, Lord, and I, I pray as well for the Chuns. Uh, God, we thank you uh, for the new life. We thank you for Joshua. We thank you for the blessing that children are. And we just pray for continued healing on his body, Lord, uh, that you would continue to strengthen him um, and uh, bring him home soon, uh, that, that he'd be able to be uh, with his family. And so we thank you for all the things that are going on. We just pray, Lord, I know there's other um, there's other hurts and there's other needs, and we, we just pray that you would be ministering um, to our hearts this morning. We pray this your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, <clears throat> a few years ago, when our, our daughter, Caitlin, we have uh, two daughters who are, our oldest daughter, Hannah, just turned 18. Caitlin is 15. And so when Caitlin was little, um, she got angry and upset about something, and uh, she decided that she wanted to run away. So she went to her room, and she comes out, and um, she's got all of her bags packed. She's just, like, loaded down with all this stuff. She's got a bag, and, it's, and I'm like, where are you going? She's like, I'm going to Nana's. And so we look at her stuff. She's, like, packed, like, all of her books and all of her stuffed animals. Uh, she's packed her Halloween costume, um, and maybe a couple other things. <laughs> and she's like, I'm running away. And uh, so she decides she's going to go to Nana. She walks to the front door. Now, Nana lives in Phoenix. Just <laughs> but she's, <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm going to run away, right? We, we've all had experience like that, right, where um, maybe we decided we're going to run away, or you have kids, they're going to run away. You're like, that's just, like, there's, there's no way you're getting to Nana's house. There's no way we're letting you leave, and... There's no way you're going to make it with all that luggage that's worthless. <laughs> uh, but, right, we, we've all experienced things like that with kids, but also as adults, we, we have those moments where we're like, you know what, I just sort of want to run away, right? Whether it's work, and work's just been daunting, and deadlines, and you're like, I'm just getting smeared, and like it's 16-hour days, or whatever it is, you're like, you know what, I just, I just want to go away for a while, right? Or maybe it's um, maybe it's with relationships and, and things have just been really hard relationally, whether it's family or w with, with your marriage or good friendships. And you're like, you know what? I just, I kind of just want to run away. I want to get away from things for a while. But we all have had those moments where like, I just, I kind of just want to run away. I want to get away from things. Well, today we're looking at a guy who decides I want to run away, but I want to run away from God. I don't like what God's doing. I don't like what God's saying. I don't like what God is calling me to do. And so I'm just going to run away. Um, it's, it's a story of a man named Jonah. And if you are new to church, um, if you've never been to church before, you've probably still heard the story of Jonah, right? Jonah is a guy who gets swallowed by a big fish, right? That's the story of Jonah. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's what we're going to look at today, the story of Jonah. And in fact, we're going to spend the next four weeks talking through the book of Jonah. Um, and, and really, just so you know, the story of Jonah, it's, although the book of Jonah is titled Jonah, the main character and the main idea is not really about Jonah and his life, but it's really about God. And it's about God's faithfulness. And so we're, as we look through Jonah, we're going to look about God's faithfulness um, through the story of Jonah. So if you have your Bibles, you would open up to Jonah. That would be excellent. Um, now, Jonah might be hard to find. Uh, Jonah is a little small book in the Old Testament. So it's like three pages long, um, two and a half in my Bible. It's in the Old Testament. If you have uh, like your iPhone or a Bible app, it's going to be so much easier to find it, right? So it's... <laughs> It's in the Old Testament, right? So it's um, um, after, after Obadiah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah. It's in there. I promise it's there. Um, but if, if you find Jonah, 
Let me tell you this. Put a bookmark there so you can find it next time because for the next four weeks, we're going to be in the book of Jonah and we're going to look at this story um, about the life of Jonah and about really about God's faithfulness. About God's faithfulness um, through the life of Jonah. Let me start this. We're going to start in, um, in verse 1. Jonah chapter 1. We're going to start verse 1. And it says this. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and he headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. So here's where the book of Jonah starts, right? So Jonah, just to give you a little context, Jonah is actually a prophet from God. If you read in the book of 2 Kings, we actually discover that Jonah, um, he lived probably, um, he, he was a prophet like 780 BC. We'll just say 790 to 760, seven, somewhere in there. So well, let's say it's about 780 BC. Jonah um, gets told by God, go speak to the Ninevites. Go to that city, that great city of Nineveh, because their wickedness has come up against me. Now, what's up with that, their wickedness? Um, the city of Nineveh was known for being wicked, for being vile, for being um, just evil people. So Nineveh at that time was one of the leading cities um, for the nation of Assyria. So some people, just to give you a little bit of idea, some people will say, well, Jonah's not real. Um, it, it's just an allegory. It's a story to give a spiritual sort of um, lesson. But what we see is the whole book of Jonah is actually anchored in history. Jonah is a real man. He lives 780. In fact, he lives during, um, during, the, time, during the reign of these kings. Jeroboam II is one of the kings while, while he's prophesying. Um, and then he lives during the time of Assyria, about 780 BC. Assyria is a world power. They are dominating the world, going through crushing nations. Um, and Israel is one of those nations that's kind of in their path uh, to be destroyed. And here's the thing is they are, just, they are wicked. It's not just that, well, they run over nations, but they just love wickedness. I, they, they'll go into nations and they just torture people. They destroy people. They, not just men, they don't just go to battle. They, they go and they destroy women. They destroy children. They, they, um, they're known um, historically for, for like skinning people alive, taking people's skins and making tapestries out of them, making chairs and furniture out of their bones and skin, hanging people who are dead, like impaling them, like just like vile, right? It's, it's not just that they're, they kill people, but they make it into sport. So if you could think of somewhere along the line of maybe ISIS, right? Th that not only do they, uh, do they have wicked things they want to do, but they, they are put on display for everyone to see. They're making sport of other people. And God says to Jonah, Jonah, I want you to go talk to them. And Jonah runs from God. Now part of it are like, well, maybe he doesn't want to get killed, doesn't want to get skinned alive as well. Well, I guess that could be part of it. <laughs> that makes sense. But the real issue with Jonah is Jonah doesn't want to go speak to them. He runs away from God because he doesn't want God to forgive them. Right? He, he knows that they're wicked, they're vile. He knows about them. He's afraid of them. And he's like, no, I, God, I don't want to see you forgive them. I want them to get what they deserve. So I don't want to speak to them, God. I'm not going to help you. God, I know you're compassionate. I know you're kind. I know you're loving. And I'm great with that, but just not toward them. And so he runs away from God. So if you have your Bibles, I'm sorry, if you have, if you have your notes, if you have your notes there, uh, whether it's in the app or whether it's in the bulletin, the first thing on your notes is this, is that God has compassion for all people. God has compassion for all people. See, Jonah's like, I'm glad that you're compassionate, God. But just don't be compassionate toward them, right? It's, a, it's understandable I mean, that, that Jonah runs, runs away from God and that Jonah doesn't want to be a part of that. I can relate to that, right? I can relate to, to like, yeah, you know what, God? I love that you're compassionate to all people. 
but just not that one person. Right? God's not just compassionate to good people like us. Right? We always, we all, don't we always lump ourselves in the good category? Like, well, yeah, God's good. God's nice to good people like us, just not them. Whoever the them is, is the per- right? And we all have our different them. God, I, I love it that you're compassionate. I want you to forgive give everyone, but just not that person. God, I'd love to partner with you in reaching the world, but just not that person. If you ask me to go talk to that person, no way. But what we see is God is compassionate toward all people, not just the good people, but all people. Ninevites are the wickedest of the wicked. And God wants to preach, wants Jonah to preach to them so that their hearts will be softened and that they'll come to faith in God. Let me tell you, this is good news. This is good news for us. It is good news for us because God is a God who is compassionate. He is compassionate toward those who are wicked. He is compassionate toward us who are wicked. Even though I've never killed anyone, even though I've never skinned anyone alive, I've never made furniture out of anyone, praise the Lord. I've done things that are vile and wicked. I've been sinful. I'm I'm rude. I'm mean. I'm selfish. And isn't it interesting that we can always excuse our sin and our shortcomings and say, at least I'm not like them. This is good news that God is compassionate. He's compassionate to all people. He's compassionate to us. And and the Bible tells us that, that all of us at one time were enemies of God. And that while we were enemies, while we wanted nothing to do with God, he was still searching us out. He was pursuing us. He was chasing us down and said, I want you to know my love. I want you to know my forgiveness. Even though you may want nothing to do with me, I still am pursuing you and chasing you. I still want relationship with you. And that is a powerful thing. And let me tell you, some of you are here today and you need to hear this. Because you may feel like I am beyond God's grace and I am beyond God's love. I am beyond God's forgiveness. And let me tell you, we never are. Because God's compassion is for all people. There's nowhere we can run that we can get beyond God's grace or beyond his love, beyond his compassion. And someone here, you, you need to hear that this morning. That God still loves you. God still is pursuing you. He still is chasing you. He still desires you. Regardless of what happened years ago or last week or last night, God is pursuing you and he is a God of compassion who desires relationship with us. That is good news. God is a God of compassion. And that's an important thing for us to understand, for us to know. Now, God, now Jonah knows this. He knows God is a God of compassion. And so he runs away and like, no way, you're not using me, God. I don't want to show them compassion. And so he takes off. He goes in the exact opposite direction. He buys a ticket the opposite direction is like, I'm going to go on a boat and I'm going to run away from God. Well, let's pick up. Verse 4. Then the Lord sent, so he's on the boat, then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea. Such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid and each cried out to his own God and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. <laughs> So this storm comes. This is a crazy storm. These guys are sailors. This is what they do. This is their job. But it is such a bad storm that they're cutting cargo. Now, as a sailor, you never cut your cargo. That's how you make your money. But they're like, we don't care about money. We don't care about, we just want to live. This has got to be an awful storm. And they're terrified for their lives. They're all crying out to the gods, and Jonah's asleep. (laughs) Verse 6, and the captain went to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us and we will not perish. 
Then the sailors said to each other, come, let's cast lots and find out who is responsible for this calamity. Casting lots is kind of like drawing sticks. Whoever has a short stick, then we know that that person is responsible. So they, they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah, of course. So they asked him, tell us, who's responsible for making this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? What, what, where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? And he answered, I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them, and they asked, what have you done? And they knew he was running away from the Lord because he already told them so. And the sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? (laughs) Like, what should we do to you? Tell us. And he replied, pick me up and throw me into the sea, and it will become calm. I know that it's my fault this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Don't hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you please. Then they took Jonah They threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord. They offered a sacrifice to the Lord, and they made vows to him. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. The second thing that I want you to see in this, in number two in your notes, is that running from God never works out well. Running from God never works out well, right? And for Jonah, he's like, I'm going to run from God. Well, it doesn't work out well for him. He ends up in the middle of a storm. He ends up thrown to the sea. He ends up inside the belly of a fish. Like, that's bad news. But let me tell you what, running from God, it doesn't work out well for us either. And we may not run from God the way that Jonah runs from God, like I'm going to take a boat and run the other way. But oftentimes, we have subtle ways of running away from God. When there's stuff in our life that we're doing, maybe there's sin in our life. And I want to live the way that I want to live. We just say, you know what, God, I'm going to run away from you. I'm going to stop coming to church. I'm going to stop contacting my friends who are going to ask me, how are you doing? Because I don't want to talk to them about it. In fact, I have seen this so many times. People are making bad choices in life, say, I want to live how I want to live. So I'm going to stop coming to church. I'm going to stop reading my Bible. I'm going to stop praying. I'm going to, God, I'm going to stay away from you. In fact, people will say, you know what? I, I don't want to come to church because when I, when I come to church, it feels like you're speaking right to me. Well, it's not that I have any secret knowledge about your life. It's that the Holy Spirit penetrates your heart and convicts you. And we don't like that conviction. And so we're like, God, I'm going to run away. I want to stay away from you. I don't want to hear what you have to say, God. I don't want to hear what these people, these people actually care about me. They're going to call me out on these things. I don't want to hear that. So I'm going to run away. I'm going to stay away. I'm going to do my own thing. Let me tell you, running away from God, it never works out well for us. It never works out well for us. It's our sin always has a way of catching up to us. In fact, Hebrews, um, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, it, it says this. It says that nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of, to him of whom we must give an account. Right? Nothing's hidden from God. We try to run from God. We try to run from our sin and say, God, you know, it's fine. Especially when it's stuff that's like, oh, I've got this, I've got this, um, you know, area of life that I just don't want to deal with. Our sin always catches up to us. In fact, I will tell you, over my last 20 years of being a pastor, I've sat in rooms with married couples, with families, with teenagers, with their parents, and, and their lives are just falling apart because they've been trying to hide from God, and now all of a sudden, all of this is exposed, and it's brought to light, and they're like, oh, <laughs> now we have to deal with this. 
but we think we can run away from God and we can stay away from him. But let me tell you, our sin is a way of always catching up to us. It's never good for us. It's never good for others. Sin has a way of catching up to us, and we can never run from God. Running from God, it never works out well. God may not throw you on a boat and give you a big storm and throw you in a fish, but, bad, you know, we can't, we can't escape it, and it never works out well. When we try to run from God, it never works out well. And some of you, maybe you're in the middle of running from God right now, and maybe today is your time to say, you know what? I just need to stop. I need to give up. I need to stop running. I need to acknowledge and say, God, yes. You know, I, I, I'm in need of your love. I'm in need of your compassion. I'm in need of your forgiveness. Isn't it so funny that we run from God? God is the one who has compassion for us, who loves us, who cares for us, who is forgiving. All that we see throughout the Bible is God is a God of compassion and love and grace and mercy. And yet the one who can bring us peace, who can bring us life, who can bring us forgiveness, who can bring us happiness is the one that we are running from. Thinking, oh, if he catches up to me, I'm, you know, I, I just, I don't want to have to deal with that. And so we keep on running, but it never works out well for us. It didn't work out well for Jonah. It didn't work out well for <laughs> uh, the guys he was with. Because the truth is this, and number three, is, is that our sin has a way of impacting others. Our sin has a way of impacting others. It doesn't just impact us. Isn't that interesting? We think, well, my sin, it's only impacting me, especially if it's some sort of a, like a private sin. It's something that I'm not talking about with other people. Well, it's not going to bother anyone else. I will tell you, I, I was saying about all those meetings I've been in with teenagers, with married couples, with families, and private sin has now come, become public. And that sin is impacting people in tremendous ways. Our sin never just impacts us. Jonah's sin, it impacts the sailors. These guys are kept cutting their cargo. They're like almost drowning. They're terrified. They're freaking out. Jonah's like, it's just about me. I'm, j I'm, just, I'm just hiding from God. Don't worry, it's, it's just me and God. It's my little thing. He doesn't realize all the people <laughs> that he's bringing into it. He doesn't have the intention to, but our sin always has a way of impacting other people. So when you say, well, it's not going to impact him, it's just a me thing. That's, that, that's never true. Our sin always impacts us. It always has a way of impacting others as well. Here's the thing that I love in this story is Jonah, Jonah has no care or compassion for the Ninevites. He's, he's the prophet of God. He, he's, this is not the first time he's heard from God. God tells him, go to Nineveh. He's like, no way. I don't want to show love. I don't want to show compassion. Isn't it interesting? These sailors who don't know and don't follow God, who don't love God, show incredible compassion toward him. Right? He's like, just throw him into the ocean. And they turn, they try to paddle the other way. They're like, no way. No, we're going to save you, buddy. We're with you. Until they can't. They're like, oh, all right, let's, let's throw them over. But they go out of the way to demonstrate love and compassion. God has called us to be people who are compassionate like him. Jonah has an opportunity to join with God in making God's name great. And he's like, no way. And yet the people around him who don't know and follow God are actually putting him to shame and showing more compassion and more love than he does. And I love this. In, in verse 16, it says this. Right, they throw Jonah into the ocean. It calms down. It says, at this, the men greatly feared the Lord. They offered a sacrifice to the Lord. They made vows to him. Jonah's running away from God saying, I don't care about, about anyone else, just myself. And in the midst of that, God reaches these sailors. These sailors essentially say, I'm putting my faith in God. Their hearts are changed. Their lives are changed. Jonah wants nothing to do with it. In fact, he, he, he's no part of it. He's the whole problem. And yet God still reaches them. And they, these guys who are just kind of on the way end up finding faith in God and finding lo God's love and God's compassion. 
Because the last thing in, in our notes is this, that God will make his name, with, he'll, he'll make his name great with or without us. God will make his name great with or without us. God's like, I'm all about making my name, name great. That is what God is about. He wants his name to be elevated. He wants his name to be praised. He wants people around the world to recognize how great he is. And he says, Jonah, I'm going to do it with you or without you. Jonah says, I'm not going to help you. God's all right. I'm going to throw you in a fish and everyone's going to worship me. It's going to be great. God's going to make his name great with us or without us. And let me tell you, that, that is an opportunity. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, this is what our life is about is that I have an opportunity to join with God in making his name great, in elevating his name, in praising his name, in helping others recognize the goodness and the greatness of God. In fact, one of the ways that we do that is, is we sing together. right? On church, when, when we sing, it's not just because, well, you know, we should sing for Jesse. Jesse's going to feel bad if you don't sing. Right? Or, well, I should sing for... Uh, you know, it's just, it's a good, like, Christianly thing to do or whatever. We sing because we're singing to God. We sing these words because these words are true of God. I'm not singing for myself so everyone can hear how great of a voice I have, which I check my microphone all the time to make sure it's off <laughs> because I don't have a great voice. But if you don't have a great voice, we sing anyway because it's not about impressing the people around you. It's about bringing glory and praise to God. It's about elevating Him. It's about making His name great. That's why we sing on Sunday mornings. This is why we actually, Jesse and I and Logan, we talk on, on usually on Monday mornings, we talk about the service, and we talk about next week, and Jesse and and, and myself and Logan and Jesse mostly picked out the songs, and we're intentional about the songs that we're singing. It's not just like, well, here's a few songs, we'll sing them. Because what does this say that's true about God? How does this lead into the message, and how can we have a theme and an idea? It's, it's an important thing that we elevate the name of Christ. And let me just say, uh, while I'm on that, I've got a little, little bit of soapbox here, and that's okay. Um, it's important that we're at church on time. We actually put thought and intentionality into singing. I know oftentimes we think, well, church is about hearing a message. And that's true. That's a part of it. And we should benefit from a message and we should learn something. But it's also about giving back to God. And we miss out on worship. We're missing out on elevating Christ and praising his name. And so I would encourage you, sh try to show up on time. Be here on time. That's important. It's not, it's not important because Jesse's going to feel so bad. It's important because this is an opportunity for you to elevate God's name. Put time and energy into that. Right? So we are all about making God's name great. And God is going to make his name great with us or without us. But it's not only in this building that we make not God's name great. We make God's name great in our lives. In your workplace, you have an opportunity to make God's name great by being a great employee, by working hard, by being disciplined, by being a faithful worker. You have an opportunity to share your faith at work, and I, think, and I think we should take those opportunities. But let me tell you, being a faithful worker and a hard worker and a disciplined worker, and when the boss is gone, I'm going to do whatever, I'm just going to joke around, that, that's not honoring to God. But when we are hard working and we're faithful, we say, you know, I, this is an opportunity for me to worship God. One of, our, one of our values is that worship I is a lifestyle. Worship is the way that we live. We get to make God's name great in the way that we work. We get to make God's name great in our neighborhoods by loving our neighbors, by caring for them. We get to make God's name great. We get to invite people to service to hear about, his, about this good news. We get to invite people to events to interact with us. We get to uh, go to soccer games with our kids or music events with our kids and love people well. We get to put God on display every single moment of every single day. This is what we should be about. If you are a follower of Christ, we are about making God's name great. Because God's like, I'm going to do it anyway. You can join me or you can get thrown in a fish. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to make my name great. And so I want to encourage us as a church, would we step into that, into making God's name great? And I know, I know we do, but let's remind ourselves this week as we go. 
We have an opportunity to make God's name great in, in, in your workplace, in your home, in your neighborhood, in the car, while you're waiting in line and the cashier is super slow. You have an opportunity to make God's name great. Would we do that? Would we be those kind of people? But let me say, in order to be, a, be able to do that, it's not just about, well, I'm doing really good things, but it's reminding ourselves, why do we make God's name great? Because he's worthy of it. Because God is worthy of it. He is the creator, the sustainer of all things. He sent his son Jesus to die in our place. I deserve hell. I deserve eternal separation from God, and yet Jesus Christ loved me so much. He pursued me. When we were running away from him, we were far away. When we were wicked and evil, we were enemies. He chased us, he pursued us, and he brought us into his family. That is why we worship him. It's because he's worthy of it. And we have an opportunity this morning as we wrap up to remind ourselves that we're going to take communion. And every time we take communion, it's an opportunity to remember the greatness of God. That Jesus Christ gave his life. He shed his blood. His body was broken so that we could be forgiven, so that we could have relationships, so that we could be his friends. Let me pray for us. I'm going to invite the ushers up. I'm going to invite the worship team up. We're going to receive communion together. And, and let me say this uh, right before I pray. If you are a believer in Christ, whether you go to church here, whether you go to church somewhere else, um, if you are a believer in Christ, this, we want to invite you to come um, and, and, and participate in this. Um, you can take the elements, take the bread and the juice back to your cup, and then I'll come, back, come up, share a few words, and we'll take it together. So let me pray. God, the story of Jonah is such an incredible reminder for us that you are God of compassion that you are a God who is faithful. When we are not, when we run away, when we are far from you, when, when, when we don't want to make your name great, you are still making it great. When we are unfaithful, you are still faithful. And Lord, I pray as we come before and we, we get to take uh, communion, the, we get to eat the bread, we get to drink from the cup, we are reminded, God, that your body was broken for us. That's how much you love us, that you took our place. Lord, help us to understand your incredible love, your incredible compassion, your incredible grace, so that we can make it known. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, we're going to keep singing here in a second. But I just wanted to hit, kind of reiterate some of what Sam said. I think the tendency when we hear Jonah's story is to go, oh, that wicked Jonah didn't want to help those people. But I would tell you, you've done the same thing for a lot less, whether it's, you know, across, like, party lines politically or something like that. Maybe you're like, I don't want to share with them. They wouldn't even get it. You know, they, wouldn't, they don't deserve God's love because they're different than I am. Uh, and that's a, that, I mean, that's a lot less of a reason to not share Jesus with somebody than what Jonah was going through there. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to keep singing, you guys. Um, feel free to stand and join us as we go through communion as well. You have searched me. You know my heart. Before I spoke, you knew my every thought. The wonder of your knowledge is far too high for me to understand. You knew I'd leave your side. And cower in the cover of the night. But there's no place I could hide. From the mercy of your life, your kindness leads me to repentance. Your grace assures me to trust in you. I could climb. 
Dive down deep where darkest evil lies. I'll never find a place to flee. Your presence is always where I am. You never leave my side. Even when I fight to get my way. You patiently disarm my defenses with your grace. Your kindness leads me to repentance. Your grace assures me to trust in you. Faithful is yours. I belong to you. Search my heart and examine my thoughts. Shine your light. I can't hide in the dark. Give me faith to respond when you call. Search Well, on the night that Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took the bread with his disciples, he broke, and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's remember Christ's sacrifice together. And that night, Jesus took the cup and with his disciples he said this cup is a new covenant in my blood let's, let's remember Christ's sacrifice that was poured out for us Jesus we are just so in awe of your love your grace your forgiveness your compassion would we be reminded this week too that you pursue us and that also we have an opportunity to join with you in sharing your incredible love with others. Pray that your name, Jesus. We're going to sing one last song, and I'm going to invite our ushers forward, and we're going to receive our offering as we sing. And uh, let me just say, offering is an incredible opportunity uh, for us uh, to give back to God. He has blessed us so richly. He has been so compassionate toward us. And this is an opportunity for us to say, God, thank you for all that you've done for me. Um, if you're new, you can also, this would be a great opportunity to drop. Uh, if you have a connection card, you can put it in the offering as well. So um, let's continue to worship together. If you guys aren't already, please stand and sing with us.
can separate even if i ran away your love never fails i know i still make mistakes but you have new mercies for me every day your love never fails and you stay the same through the ages your love never changes the maybe pain in the night but joy comes strong and the water's deep but i'm not alone here in these open seas your love never fails the chasm is far too wide i never thought i'd reach the other side your love never fails together for my good you make all things work together for my good see now church you make all things work together for my good and you make all things work together for my Thank you guys again so much for being here. A couple quick reminders before you head out the door. We're going to have prayer partners. If you need anything, um, if you need somebody to just pray over anything in your life or someone else's life that you know that they're going through, utilize that. It's a great resource. Also, Friday, volunteer uh, volunteer dinner. If you volunteer for something, show up. We got food. We got a gift. It'll be a wonderful thing. So see you guys soon. Thank you guys again for being here. We'll see you next week. <laughs>